what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert so today we have a very special video first of all before we get into it it's finally december or at least it's december 2nd when i'm recording this that means you get to switch up our outfit that i've had for like four years you know how when you go to the store or something and you hear christmas music going on and it's like october and it's too early sometimes november is a little too early as well but now it's finally December, and it is appropriate to have Christmas and holiday attire on. So, with that said, we're switching it up. And before we do anything, I want to say thank you guys so much for all the support on the videos lately. Um, in December, I want to try to do, like, two videos a day. I'll, I want to see how it goes. Maybe not every day, but sometimes we'll have two. So, hopefully you guys will enjoy that one. And so, what did we want to talk about today? I wanted to talk about the or my favorite grind spots of 2022. Now, the reason why we brought this up is because right now and I think for this week and next week and probably the rest of the month, to be honest, there's a nice drop bonus along with XP that's probably happening. So for everyone who's going for rare items like the infinite potions, uh, the compass piece, merchant ring, uh, what is it? The archaeologist map and everything. Uh, now is the best time because there's a drop rate bonus going on. And I wanted to talk about my spots and my opinions on all the spots. So what? how are we going to do it? And what are we doing? Uh, we're going to look at the monster zone info from uh, relevant APs. So actually, I don't know where to start. Like if you are... How do I put this? Let's say you're in seasons and like you're at the end game of season and then you're moving out of it all the way to the rest of the thing. I think that's where we're going to start. So with that said, um, so I think at the end of season, you should be around like 240 to 50 AP. So we could look at that. But with that said, I'm going to talk about some other spots that I've used. And some of these are, like, they're not bad. Like, for example, Naga Temple. It's kind of out of the way in Valencia, but I don't think it's a bad spot. Back in the day, this used to be a meta spot for, like, lower-end people. Before, like, Polly's was a thing. And it was just... Valencia was pretty good. So, now there's more variety. So, a lot of people have been asking me, where do I grind at XAP and what should I do? So a lot of this stuff here, I've always looked at as a recommendation. So for example, if we look at the map and you see how there's some spots that are like uh, recommended 240 and some like recommended 160, 240, 300 and so on. I actually have tested pretty much every spot in the game, some more than others. But I would say for the most part, they are pretty accurate. And the recommended AP is being able to do it efficiently. And like if you see a spot over here, let's take Thornwood, for example. Recommended AP is 250. Yes, you can go in there with like 230 and you can kill them. Will it be efficient? Not really. Because uh, accuracy and stuff. So... Keep that in mind when I talk about APs, it's being able to grind a rotation efficiently and not spend so long on one pack that you you might be just better off grinding somewhere else. So yeah, just keep that in mind when we talk about everything. And I think by grinding pretty much everything, except Crypt of Resting Thoughts, I don't have too much uh, experience here just because I don't think I'm geared enough for that one. Um, and that anyway, that one is a special one. But for the most part, I think they're pretty accurate in terms of AP and should you be there. So, AP, let's start with, uh, let's start with Centaurs. This is just the middle ground where everyone knows what to do. Where do you go when you need money and you don't have a lot of gear? Centaurs is the answer. Um... So it is recommended 190 and 200 DP. Realistically, the DP is a little bit less relevant. It's a can you kill it before it kills you kind of thing. And um, realistically, 190 is good. 
I think people could go in with like 180 and still be efficient with it. But I think that's a good recommendation. And uh, as we all know, Centaurs is quite a lot of money for not so geared players. And even if you are geared, it's like, it's not bad money. So I think you're getting around like 400 to like 700 mil an hour. Uh, this is one of the spots where you do have to use Agris. Otherwise, it's not that good. So there's a quest line for the Agris thingy. And uh, you use about like 20,000 an hour here. Maybe a little bit more if you are a faster class. But Centaurs is the golden standard of if you are a new player, where do you go? Whether you're on seasons or not, this is a good spot for most players. Now, Sherikin has two things, day and night. Um, daytime, this is a good spot for Agris as well. And it also gives the, uh, what is it, infinite health potion, these thingies. So this is the Ancient Peace, the full one, and if you get the 100 Dragon Fangs, you get the piece. So I actually have a lot of videos, or not a lot, but a few videos here. And I do think this is a good spot for pretty decent, like the, if you're within the 210 to 230 AP range, I think this is very good. Plus you should be going here because you do want the infinite health potion at some point in your BDO career. And so, yeah. Um, the nighttime, so basically what happens during day and night, if you have never heard of it, is during the daytime, it's just like a normal grind spot that we all know. At nighttime, all the mobs disappear, but there's like a crystal pillar thingy that you spend energy on, and it'll summon like an elite or uh, like a heavy elite boss, as we'll call it. And so the reason why you do this at night is because it has a higher chance of dropping the ancient piece, which is for your infinite potion. So I'm not sure how good it is in terms of like silver versus daytime. But if you're doing it at nighttime, it's a very or like a higher chance of getting the potion piece drop, which is pretty solid. But you are using energy at the cost of it. So just your general standard is Run it during the day, use Agris, and it's pretty decent silver for a 210 to 230 AP range. Um, Navern Step. This is... You're, I'm going to be honest, you're here for the Clairvoyance thing. The Voltara's Clairvoyance. And chances are you're not really getting Griffin Helm. It's hard to get. Um, but if you're looking for Trogdalo Horse Gear, you get a lot of Wind Spirit Stones um and earth's ones as well but generally you're here for the infinite mana potion this is by far the hardest one that just i think universally people agree this is the most tedious one because pearl abyss devs probably thought okay so all the other five grind spots are you know just normal grinding let's give players a break and so let them gather for this one and i was like no just no Make them all grind spots, it's fine. However, with that said, Navern, is, Navern Step isn't the only place you can get this if you're looking for the infinite potion piece. You can get it from hunting in Narcion as well. So it's, uh, I mean, you, you're going to get it eventually, but where you get it, most likely going to be Navern Step. I do have a video as well on like where to do all the rotations for every single infinite potion piece. So if you want to check that out on the channel, it's somewhere or i'll leave a link in the description so just make it easier i'll leave it yeah i'll leave a link in the description but um you aren't really grinding here for anything but this one but it is a good spot to get it uh sulfur mine i remember back in the day years ago sulfur mine used to be an actual grind spot nowadays it's kind of a meme the only reason why you're here is for the map of unknown peace which is one of the five you need for the full-on archaeologist map. And from my understanding, the compass versus the archaeologist map, uh, the map is slightly easier. And by slightly, I mean a few hundred hours less of, of a few thousand. But anyway, with that said, the money here is uh, not terrible. It's not the greatest. I'd rather still be at Centaurs than out in the middle of the Valencia Desert grinding here. But I assume you're if you're here, you're here for the you're going for the map piece. And that's basically it. Uh, it's a few hundred mil an hour, even at like 
220 and two like yeah 200 to 230 ap it's decent money pilaku jail another piece of the map i have videos from this back in the day i've been here literally thousands of hours many years ago you guys can watch the old videos um maybe not a thousand hours actually but uh a couple hundred never got it actually but i was also really low geared back in the day decent money a lot of the valencia spots got buffed with the trash loot so i don't think it's terrible but going out into the like the farthest place in the desert just to grind here uh, i wouldn't say it's worth it but if you're there you're going for the map piece um sakraya upper upper there's an upper and lower for sakraya the upper one is the easier one and i believe the reason why people are in the upper one is for the rich merchant ring piece um i don't think it's a bad spot there's like the rotation is kind of weird for the upper one but it does also drop all the <clears throat> same things as usual so if you're there you're there for the rich merchant ring piece and i don't really have too much time in there but i have a lot more time in the underwater spot uh yeah i think that's about right in terms of the ap levels now alter imps and brigadi den i don't really have too much experience grinding these because these are the lower end elvia spots for serendia and if you were going for like the shard thingies like the yellow shard or the blue shard I personally went to other spots, so we'll talk about that those later. I don't really have too much experience there. I just know they are on the lower end of the Elvia spots. I'm sure they're decent money, but not enough experience to tell you. Mirror Mock Ruins. Oh boy, this is a fun one. Um, how do I describe this one? You could grind it solo, or you could grind it in a group. Now, this spot is the universally known big XP spot or at least yeah i think it's still good xp nowadays so the money is decent you'll get like most of all this stuff but the real reason you're here is for the xp and yeah i would say these the ap and dp requirements are pretty accurate um if you want to level up fast and you aren't like super geared like the 280 and up this is a good spot to go for um xp and if you do group grinding <clears throat> here's how it works so like you are in actually let me just show you um so like here is the mirror mox place right <clears throat> okay so if you are in like one spot like let's say you are at the node their group of people are like upper and like slightly up a little left and that so everyone's within like the wi-fi range of your party and then it's just a lot of xp that's where it rolls in so yeah decent money very good xp um okay where are we going where are we going now oh yeah i forgot to talk about this one this is like a special special topic Polly's forest very good for low-end exp very good for skill point grinding, which is less relevant now because skill points used to be very important back in, the, or like, I mean, I guess a few months ago before they made the change. But um, before you would need a lot of skill points, if you, especially if you wanted to reroll. But nowadays you would have to go like do anything else. You could just play seasons and get like 1200 and just be fine. But Polyforest is a good spot if you just want to power through a lot of skill points really quickly. And it's good for, like, seasonals. And then once you're out of seasons, you're probably never there again. Uh, Forest Renaros is another infinite health potion piece spot. And in my opinion, people said this one was one of the harder ones for the health potion. And I, I got... Okay, so I have two infinite pots or have like two sets of each of them like two health ones two mana ones and the first one i got the full ancient piece and the second one i used the leftover pities and got 100 uh, pities before i got it so 
Is it difficult? I think so. Um, but it's not bad silver an hour. So like, if you're grinding here strictly for the potion piece, it doesn't feel as bad because the silver per hour here is n like, it's not the worst thing you can get when you're grinding for something. So, uh, once again, in the infinite potion video that I'll leave in the description, you could find out the rotations that I used and it's pretty still all in silver an hour. You'll be fine. And the Spectre Energy Drop is, I swear, a meme because I grinded like all the infinite potion spots and literally got zero Spectre's energies. If you want them, go to Thornwood. Monsham Forest is pretty solid, actually. And <clears throat> I have never gotten a straight Ancient Drop. I've gotten 100 Pity pieces twice. So overall, the silver is pretty decent here. Um, you do get a, quite a bit of Narc Earrings. Um, the pity pieces, I think I got like between four to seven an hour. Uh, this is with tent buff and just like whatever extra buffs that were going on at the time, but pretty solid silver an hour. I think it's a little bit more than forest Renaros, but once again, this is for the infinite mana potion. And I think it's slightly higher, but both of these spots are very solid for potion pieces. Castle Ruins Elvia is a group grind spot. I did it back in the day. I'm not sure how many people actually still do it nowadays. So, yeah, I don't know. But I it wasn't bad. It was like 400 mil an hour. But for a group of three, uh, maybe not. But actually, I haven't been there in a while. It could be a lot more. Thornwood Forest. Oh, boy. This one has gotten buffed over time. Um, if you want the Spectre's Energy, this is the place to be. If you're going for the Lung, which is the helmet piece, I believe, of Orzeka, uh, this is not the place to be. So, if you are very, like, within this AP range of 250, this is probably the only place you're going to be able to get the left lung relatively easily if you are super geared and you want the helmet piece ash forest is the place to be but yeah the ominous ring drop rate is pretty low so expect to grind there a lot to get it um overall i would say you get maybe like one leaf every hour or two so that's not great whereas ash forest you get maybe like two to five an hour but once again, that's a gear difference. We'll talk about that later. Um, History of Ruins. Boy, do I have a lot to say about this. I've been here for about like 400 hours in the past two months. Maybe three months. I don't know. It kind of... It's all the same now. Um, History Histria and Aukman are two different ones that used to be very meta spots for grinding back in the day. Um, this is where you get the compass piece, where you get one from a Vodkin, one from an Elton, and one from the Achman mobs, I think the elite one. So, Histria, you get a compass piece, or at least for me personally, I'm a little bit over the gear cap for this, but I mean, I'm not there for the silver, it's just nice to have. Um, Histria, I make between 500 mil to an, 1 bill an hour. It really depends on the earring drop rates. And <clears throat> if I'm about like 250% uh, on the loot buff, like just the uh, item drop rate, I get about maybe 40 or 50 Capris an hour, along with about 40 to 50 uh, Ancient Scrolls an hour. And so that's where a lot of the silver comes in. And then you could get with Agris, about 20,000, 22,000 trash loot an hour on average. Um, I get one compass part about every 30 to 40 hours. I have five of them. And I, I, I've actually grinded here a lot. Some hours you have like good RNG, some you don't. So this spot is, it's okay. Uh, the Tungrad next pretty frequent actually once every few hours you'll get one which is not bad and some black shards and red shards which are tongue red uh earrings actually so that's where the money fluctuates on in terms of silver you get about 300 mil from trash loot plus uh bonus capris and scrolls depending on if you run them or sell them that's more and then 
potential ton grads. So 500 mil to a bill an hour. That's a wide range, actually, but you're banking on bonus goodies. As for Achman, um, you can get about like 40 to 50,000 trash loot an hour here. <laughs> the trash loot is not worth that much, but I mean, it kind of evens out by the amount you get. Achman is actually just straight up worse than Histria, despite having the same AP DP requirements. Um, I think you make a little bit less at Achman, but Histria is like harder i guess in a way to get the compass piece so yeah if you want the compass thing you're gonna be in both of these spots and i haven't been in Achman for a long time and i'll be there once i got the elton one next what do we have kratuga this is a fun one to talk about um ap good dp i think this is a little bit high you could probably get in there with a little bit less but realistically Whatever you do, just don't die, and you're fine. So, this is an aggro spot. You do have to use aggress to be fine. If you are looking for artifacts, <clears throat> I personally think grinding at Kartuga is the best spot to get general artifacts. Because, let's say you were looking for, I don't know, something in particular. Let's say this, for example. The drop rate for this in a specific spot is very low. Whereas you can get between like four to five artifacts an hour on average. And yes, there is a larger pool of artifacts, but I think that like if you, the more you grind here, you'll just get a lot of them to the point where the rate of getting the one you want will be overall higher in Kratuga than it is grinding specifically at a spot for one of them. So I have put probably about 100 hours in here over the course of, uh, I guess, since it came out. And so whether you think that's a lot or not, uh, you do get Elkars pretty regularly. Uh, back in the day, you would have to grind the spot if you wanted Elkar because they were like hard max price on pre-orders or just orders in general. Uh, nowadays, these are like almost 40, 50 mil. If you need an Elkar, you just buy it off the market. It's not a big deal. Um, so if you are in Kratuga, you're basically here for artifacts. And I've basically gotten everything I wanted here. I'm pretty sure I've gotten at least one of everything or multiples. So if there's something in particular you want, Kratuga is probably the place to be for it. Um, Swamp Nagas and Fogans. These are actually the spots I've grinded for the uh, cups or the shard pieces. So here, let me show you on the map where I got it. So, assuming you are in Elvia, around this spot right here is the one you go for the blue shards. And then um, Bloody Monastery for yellows and Orc Camp is where I went for the red ones. So, just to give you an idea, I grinded Orcs a lot. And it was actually my bottlenecks were the other ones. And so, look, I have... Six, over 600 red shards from grinding orcs and this is after i made all the cups i wanted and then we have some yellow ones but blue ones are definitely like the worst ones for me in my opinion just because i didn't like grinding there but you need to if you want a cup or to like upgrade your gear so with that said uh fogans and nagas this is I went to these spots instead of the other ones that were above here, like Alter Imps and Brigadi Den. I don't have too much experience there. I just went to Nagas and Fogans, and generally, by 260 AP, you'll be fine here. DP is kind of important here, but uh, if you know how to play your class, which you should by this AP and gear score level, then you'll be fine. So, you don't really grind here for the silver. I mean, it's not bad. You make maybe like 400, 500 mil an hour here and plus bonus uh, Lunar next. But you're really here for the shards, both uh, yellow and blues. And Star's End. Um, Star's End used to be good in the day, back in the day. And even now, the reason why you're at Star's End is for the distortion necklace or earrings. Sorry. So here's how... Star's End works. If you get a distortion earring, you you did good for the hour. 
If you didn't get it, it feels awful. So, yeah, that's about how to describe the spot. If you get an earring, you're doing great. If you didn't get an earring, it sucks. You make like 150 mil an hour here with no rare drops, and then it shoots up to like 500 if you get one. With that said, distos are pretty rare and valuable because, as you guys know, distos are considered one of the best in slot endgame earrings. So if you're going to make it yourself, expect to be here for a while. If not, just buy it. And I would recommend for distos, just buy it because it actually feels bad failing distos because they're so expensive to hard to get. And so grinding stars end really like demotivate you if you don't get it like one in two or three hours and you're just like why am i here i could have been anywhere else and have made like five times the amount of silver so anyway yeah stars end you're there for the earring that's it underwater sakrai uh this is a fun spot um so one congrad rings you're there for a lot of things one secret song is for the blue horse gear kragdalo if you grind there, these are pretty rare, actually, but I don't think many people actually have blue Krogdalo gear. Um, these are the... You combine the red and the black shards to make a Tungrad ring, and they're kind of expensive. Other than that, the Abyssal Essences are for the Frenzy drafts, and so if you plan on not buying them off the market and you want to grind it, this is the way to go. You get a lot of them an hour. I think... In my opinion, I think I got like 30 to 40 Abyssal Essences in maybe an hour or two. I don't actually know. Last time I was there, I grinded. No, I think I actually grinded about like two hours and got like 40 something. Yeah, so like 20 an hour. Maybe I'm just bad, but I don't know. I don't grind here often, but I did a while ago. So anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff to be here. I would recommend a lot of people to be here. It's decent silver. Um, you get a lot of... If you get a Tungrad ring, that's just like doubling your money here. And you also get a lot of Abyssal Essences. And so this spot is pretty chill, in my opinion. So if you're within the 260 range, this is probably where I'd recommend. Actually, this I would say going even further, between like 260 to 280, I would recommend being here. Because it is decent money. XP is not the worst I've ever seen, but like it's kind of out of the way to get to. So like if you just like grinding, chill areas, uh, this will be a pretty decent one. I heard they are buffing this spot. This is Turos. Um, so why are you here at Turos at this AP? Well, you want the Flame of Despair. For everyone who doesn't know, you use your Capris 10 Dim Tree or Red Nose and you turn it into a Fallen God armor. Uh, you need the flame. I believe you can actually get the Fallen God flame off the market, but the other one for the Labresca, you cannot yet. There are still a lot of orders. Um, <clears throat> as for the right lung, which is the Orzeka armor, I believe it is a very low chance. If you get a Turo belt, it's very rare, but I mean, it's pretty decent silver. But the reason why you're here is for the flame. And I think they're actually buffing the spot soon. So, yeah. Skyfin Upper, very solid. It's a group of five grind spot, but you make a lot of silver here. Um, Tungrad Belts, like, they're going down in price, which hurts your overall hour. But if you're grinding in parties of five, you're probably just chilling with your friends and you're having a good time. But it is a lot of silver and decent XP. So, I guess, like, the... Like, Tungrad Belt itself irrelevant in cost. You're just chilling with your friends and having a good time. Paddock's Island. I don't really have too much experience here. It says treasure item. And what the treasure item is here is the Rich Merchant Ring piece. Uh, if you're going for the Rich Merchant Ring, you probably aren't even watching this video because you're super geared already. Because to get the other four, you need, like, over 300 AP. So anyway... Uh, Paddocks, they got buffed. It's still not really that good. It's like 500 mil an hour, but you're probably way over the 270 AP cap at this point. And so 500 mil an hour is like, you could do that with 
180 AP at Centaurs. So, with that said, Paddox Island, you kind of have to go out of your way because Paddox is over here. And, um, yeah, you have to have a boat that gets you there or get compassed by your friend. So, yeah, the travel cost to get here is kind of annoying. Plus, you need the gear, so it's like... I don't think there are too many people here, and the silver isn't even that good itself. So, if you're there, you're there for the rich merchant ring piece, in my opinion. Okay, where are we? Um, Rudum's not really that good. Oh, I didn't know they dropped distos now. They must have... Yeah, oh, no, wait. Actually, I remember reading the patch notes. They added distos to it. I haven't tested it since. Is it good? I don't know. But if you're at Rudum's, you're pretty much there for crystallized despairs. Um, scorching sun shards are for upgrading your god eye. So basically, if you have a pet black star, you can turn it into a base god eye. And these are the materials you use to get your god eye from, like, pride to pen. So I would strongly recommend you guys as a person who's done this myself enhancing a god eye past duo is not really worth it and even getting it to duo is still not really worth it um so the question is do you or is it worth it to go to brutums or no like upgrade your black star if it pushes you into a new ap bracket it's probably worth it just know that once you get a pen black star or some equivalent, selling it is not the easiest thing. So you're probably going to be losing more money by because you're using the stacks to obviously enhance your gear and the memory frags. Just the cost in general of making it to duo and then selling it for like the same price you could sell a Tet black star, maybe a little bit more, minus taxes. You're actually losing a lot more silver. So just keep that in mind. If you if it pushes you up into a new bracket of AP, it's probably okay. But I would not recommend trying to push it past like duo. Because it downgrades from there. Uh Winter Tree Fossil, it's actually horrible. You guys can watch my video of that. I did it a few times and I hated it. Merle Wax Labyrinth. Um This is the one in the Eternal Winter area. Whereas, like, everyone, you can have five people in the labyrinth, right? Everyone has their own grind spot. Every 10 minutes, it cycles through a new room, and you just keep doing it until you get to a new area or, like, the boss spawns, right? Which actually they're changing, and they made it a lot easier now. So, this boss spawn time is a lot shorter than it was before. And instead of spending like 15 minutes, it's like 10 minutes per room. So I really love the concept of the Murrowax Labyrinth. It was really cool. You can watch my videos of it. But um, it, it's just like, it's a cool concept. But once you get the flame and the embers, so basically what this is, remember when we were talking about Turos, it was how uh, you can make your Labresca helm from it. So after you get it, there's like no reason to be here again, which is really sad. Because I like the concept of this area. Just like everyone has their own room to grind. It's peaceful. And you just wait till the boss. And then once the boss spawns, you all go to like a center room, right? And you, like the five of you, whether you're friends or, in, or not in a party, um, you fight the boss. Everyone gets loot. Cool idea. Love it. I wish they would add more stuff. But it's no reason to ever be back there. And uh, if you are going for the Labresca helm... Jade Starlight Forest is actually the best place to get it. Um, I have around 50 embers and I got the full flame as well. So the money is decent, but you have to be using Agris here. And it is like, it's a very good silver an hour. And you can do that. So once again, you're kind of here for the flame because if you're at a 280 spot and want more money, like literally Elvia Oryx is the place to go or something. But this spot isn't bad. It's pretty chill. There's a lot of open rotations. Grinding here is pretty easy. And I think, yeah, you can go here. And it'll be fine. So for the last few of these, I would say Bloody Monastery is a very good one, in my opinion. I grinded here for a lot of the uh, yellow shards. And <clears throat> the silver an hour is probably like 500 mil an hour plus 
number of crimson bells you get, which uh, basically it's like one of those like horde wave thingies where you spawn one or like you ring the bell or in your inventory, you just use the item and like enemies just come in waves after wave and you just kill them more trash loot, rare items potentially. But basically you're here for the shards and I get about 10, 10 shards an hour, full loot buffed and everything, 10. Uh, the moon's nails, which is the lunar necklace. Uh, they're not really that common. You get maybe one every like five hours or so. It's not really the greatest, but I mean, it's not the worst money I've ever seen. Or camps in the next one, very good money an hour. You get maybe like, I think your average person who's not like mega cracked a year can make about like 600 mil an hour. If you are high end and you know how to do things really well, you could probably make about a billion silver. But I, I would say the average person, probably like five to 600 mil an hour here. But uh, higher end goes up to like 1 billion. So that's about it. Uh, abandoned Monastery. Dude, I hate this place so much. It's not really even that good. You're there for the Dawn Earrings and that's it. Um, you know why I hate this is because you're grinding. Let's say you're at like uh, an hour into it and then you... It gives off a world notification that a boss is spawning there. And then people can like straight up just grief you there and steal it. Which... I used to think was fun until you realize like I'm only there for the dawn earring and then when like nine people show up <laughs> I don't even know that way I wish they would just remove the thing and th I'm saying this as a person who's pretty geared and can like hold my own and you this is a group spot as well but like I don't know if you're grinding guess what the last thing you want is to get your like dawn earring jacked and keep in mind, this is someone who's saying this who can defend their own, like, hold my own in a fight here. But, yeah. I don't know. You're here for the Dawn Earring, the XP, the money. It's not that great. And so, yeah, if you're good at PvPing, you might like it. If you're not, uh, I would probably just buy these off the market. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, Primal Giant Elvia. I don't really have too much experience here. I heard it was pretty decent money, but like it's really boring. And uh, Arethia's Limbo. This is a unique one. It's not really a grind spot, but it's more of like a puzzle or a maze thing where you fight a boss at the end. And I think it might be actually easier if you just looked up a video. I have it just... Search up my name in Arethia's Limbo, and you can just watch me do it on the hard mode. The 290 AP recommendation, I think that's a little bit much. Um, I don't, like, yeah, you need gear for this, but it's not, like, things don't really hurt. Even on, even if you are, like, super geared or you're not. The AP is more of how fast can you clear things. Not really, like... Will things kill you? Because if you die in Dorethea's Limbo, I think you did something wrong. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like, do you know colors and shapes? Cool. Proceed to the next room. Fight off waves of enemies. Find the next room. And then after, like, four rooms, um, you go to, like, a treasure room. And then you open it. And I believe the way the mechanics work is you have one hour to complete it from entering. And then after that, it's like just do whatever then like you get like one to three in here so eh, it's not bad like the money an hour i think it's about like five to six hundred mil but you, these are very like you don't get to go in here often because you need the witch's token that you get from like jade starlight so this forgotten witch's token this allows you to go in and start the trial and then you do this and then you get basically more so it's like a bonus on top of grinding Hex Sanctuary, Elvia. This is like mega cracked money an hour. So, uh, yeah. If you are super geared, you want to be here. Um, you get a lot of crystallized despairs. If you're super lucky, you get a full-on blessed soul fragment, which is to upgrade your alchemy stone into a tier one. So, you could turn your alchemy stone into like... Let's use Vel's Heart, for example. Uh, Vel's Heart, blessed Vel's Heart, exalted Vel's Heart. I personally have the Exalted, which is the tier 2. It's like, you just get a lot of these. 
You turn a lot of crystallized despairs into your upgrades, and that's how you get it. But yeah, you could make up to like a billion silver here an hour on average. This is a very high end spot, which is why the AP recommendations are very high. But you make a lot of money in return. Cool. Olin's Valley, party of three. Very good silver an hour. Uh, everyone needs to be kind of good. So uh, you are also here for a rich merchant ring piece. For all of you who have watched a lot of streamers like Choice, he's a cool dude, very geared. And uh, it took him a very long time to get it. But uh, Olin's, if you have a group of friends to do it, eh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I would recommend it. Ash Forest. I have a few videos of here. This place is awful, and there are very few reasons why you're here. One, you are going for a Pendebo, and this is the only way to get it because the market is perma sold out of them. What I would do if I was a Pearl Abyss developer, raise the price of Debareka necklaces to about like 1 to 1.5 billion for a base one, then maybe more people will do it, and they'll, you'll start seeing them on the market. Raise the cap of everything, and you're good. With that said, I did a lot of grinding. Um, I wanted the Orzeka helm here, and we grinded a lot. So we got from 0 to 100 here, and so we got it. Good stuff. This is about 20,000 kills to get to full all four uh, titles or whatever they're called. So yeah. Ash Forest, if you get a Debo, you're winning. If you don't get a Debo, you're not winning. So that's about it. Uh, Kaifen Underground, very good spot as well. Very geared place for everyone. I've died to like the dumbest things here, but it is pretty decent money and XP. So if you want to know where to go and level up to like 66, Gaifin is one of the places to be if you have enough gear. And even if you have enough gear, you still have to be careful. Quint Hill. I actually kind of hate this. Like, it's not a bad spot. It's just like... If you've played BDO, you know that speed is everything. But for Quint Hill, you're basically grinding in like one spot. You're killing one group of mob or like two enemies for a good minute. And then you move to like, you turn over there and you fight another two enemies for a minute. And then you come back and then you do that again. So it's very slow, but the drops are pretty stacked. So yeah. I personally don't like it. It is decent money and crystallizes spares an hour, which is pretty good. But it's just a little too slow for me. If you play BDO, you know like movement speed is everything, and clearing fast is pretty fun. I'm not here to play kill one enemy for two hours or like whatever. But yeah, not for me. It's pretty good though. Crypt of Resting Thoughts is arguably the sh hardest spot in the game right now in 2022 and you're there for one reason you're getting a pen Debereka belt also there is a rich merchant ring piece here as well um grinding here solo is scary even if you have very solid gear uh i barely meet the requirements for it and i still don't think i'm ready for it like i went there i don't want to be there <laughs> but if you are looking for the like orzeka helm and armor pieces this is not the place to be uh if you want the helmet go to ash forest or yeah i think if you have the gear ash forest for the helm is the place to be and like either olin's or turo's for the armor piece i think olin's is probably better so yeah those are my opinions on the grind spots uh for relevance and overall if you have any questions feel free to ask i'm still open like if you have any questions don't feel like scared to ask just do it and i'll be happy to answer or someone else in the comments will be able to answer it as well but with that said if you're fresh out of seasons hopefully this video helped you um if you are in seasons and have no idea what to do i would start going for the infinite potion pieces because you will need them at higher end spots and I think they are very important. So with that said, have a fantastic day. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys tomorrow with more videos. And hopefully you guys uh, learn something here. So see you guys tomorrow.